Hi there, this is Alex from Gnome, and this video is going to give you an introduction to the hysteresis experiment on the Memristor Discovery platform. So you should have the Memristor Discovery board plugged into the Analog Discovery 2, and the Analog Discovery 2 plugged into your USB port on your computer, and the Memristor Discovery software started up. Uh, up in the menu in the experiments, you should click on hysteresis, and you should see uh, the screen here. Uh, on the bottom, you should not see a red bar. If you do, that means that your uh, your analog discovery is not being recognized by the Memristor Discovery software. And if that's the case, go back to the previous video and uh, sort of debug that problem. Um, you might be able to simply turn the board on and off. Um, you might have uh, unplugged the board uh, while the software was on, maybe it didn't recognize it. In any case, if you do not have a, a red bar at the bottom, you have a little green switch here indicating that the board is connected and recognized, then you're good to go. Okay, so up at the top, we can see uh, these switches one through eight. These will selectively couple our memristors uh, in the GNOME uh, memristor chip to our driver circuitry. Uh, on the right here, we can see the configuration of our MUXs. Uh, in this case, we're routing oscilloscope 1 to the A node, oscilloscope 2 to the B node, and waveform generator 1 to the A node. Waveform generator 2 is being routed to the external pin, which means we're not using it. Uh, I would recommend everybody, upon um, taking a look at any of the experiments, that you go to the Help menu. We've included some information about the, the circuit that's being uh, tested. So in this case, it's a very simple circuit formed of a voltage divider between our selected memristor or memristors and a series resistor. Uh, the series resistor should be placed in the right uh, resistor socket, uh, as you can see from uh, this configuration right here. Uh, I recommend a 5 kilo ohm, uh, maybe um, even as low as a 1 kilo ohm resistor. Uh, the higher the resistance, the longer the sort of endurance and lifespan of the memristor, but the more stochastic it's going to become. So you're going you're gonna to start to get memristors that might not switch for you um, as that resistance gets higher. And also RC effects, especially in some of the other apps like the Pulse and Synapse app <coughs> will, uh, will cause you problems as, uh, as that resistance gets too high. Okay, so you have everything plugged in. You've read the, the, the help menu. Uh, we're going to get started here. So on the control panel on the left-hand side, we can select the, the kind of waveform that we'd like to apply. Let's just keep it at a sine wave. Uh, this is the offset to the, um, to the sine wave or triangle wave. Uh, we can set the amplitude. We're going to set that to, let's say, 0.8 volts. And uh, we can set the frequency here. This first slider will set the frequency between 0 and 100 hertz. And this slider down here will set it logarithmically between 1 hertz and 10 kilohertz. Uh, you've got to make sure that the, whatever resistor you have plugged into that socket is uh, specified here in ohms. So I have 5 kilo ohm resistors. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put 5,000 uh, uh, here. This can be set all in preferences. Uh, this will save, so when you boot the program up again, uh, you won't have to, to set these to your, your default values. Uh, make sure everything is specified here. I'll be talking about this K value here in a minute. Uh, okay, so everything is plugged in. The board is recognized. We're going to select uh, the first memristor, and we're going to start this up. Uh, so notice here at the bottom, uh, we can specify how the uh, data is presented to us and uh, we're specifying capture. So this is sort of the raw data as it's being captured from the device. This is the, uh, the IV. We can see here a very sort of uh, shallow hysteresis uh, loop. Um, we can increase uh, the voltage um, uh, across the device if we'd like, try to boot that up. Um, we can affect the offset here, um, jigger it around, and uh, you know maybe maybe open up this this hysteresis loop a little bit. Um, we can check the the state of all the other devices. Um, see that there's memristors there as well. So we have a memristor. We have a memristor. We have a memristor, and we can just go through each of these and see what we got. 
Um, and in fact, we do. We have live memristors on each device. Um, some of them, like this first one, uh, look to be a little shallow. Um, notice that the frequency here was set at 10 kilohertz. So as we reduce the frequency, um, we should notice these lobes starting to um, open up. Let me unlock the axis uh, and we can see that. Let's check out some of these others. Uh, okay, so that's one thing to, uh, to observe here is how does this hysteresis loop uh, change as a function of the applied frequency? And as the, the frequency increases, what you just see is those lobes uh, um, sort of going to a resistor. Essentially, the, the voltage is changing so fast that the memristor um, doesn't have time to keep up and it sort of collapses and it just turns into a resistor. Of course, we have RC effects here, so if you start to see a loop, uh, that's an indication of the parasitic capacitance. Uh, so let's take a look at the conductance versus voltage plot. You can select that here at the bottom. <coughs> we uh, have the frequency set to 100 hertz. So what's happening here, um, as the voltage is, is uh, applied, um, it goes positive, uh, the conductance is increasing, and then as the, the voltage goes negative, it decreases, and you can sort of see that cycle here. Uh, to keep this from bouncing around, we can freeze the axis. Uh, the blue curve here is the voltage V1. This is the voltage that's applied to the, the memristor and resistor in series. And the, uh, the yellow curve here is just the voltage drop across the memristor. Um, it's uh, essentially it, although there's a few tricks that I'd like to, to show you. Uh, one is DC... Uh, switch in so we can set the amplitude to zero and we can set the offset um, to say a small positive offset and if we select the GV curve the conductance versus voltage curve we can see the um, the computed conductance of the memristor and right now we're reading 0.14 millisiemens now we can increase the the offset By little increments until we hit the threshold of the device. Now we're just on the threshold and you can see the conductance is just starting to nudge itself up. Now the rate at which this conductance is going to increase is a function of how much voltage you apply. So if we were to apply say a much higher voltage uh, we're going to get a much bigger faster jump in conductance. And if we put the, uh, the offset down here to 0.1 volts. Uh, this is low enough that it shouldn't cause too much change in the memristor. We can see that we have nudged the conductance of the memristor up. Uh, I recommend using the, the um, keyboard arrows, the right and left arrows, that will move the slider um, back and forth so you don't have to use the mouse. Uh, so we have the conductance set in this case at 0.2 two two millisiemens so we can lower that conductance so the the threshold for these devices is typically uh, less in the negative going direction which means a smaller uh, negative applied magnitude of voltage will cause the device to decrease in its conductance um, and whereas the equivalent magnitude voltage in the positive direction um, typically uh, will not so you know point two volts in the forward applied direction, point one, minus 0.1 volts in the negative applied direction. Uh, so we've, we're seeing the, the conductance of the device drop. We can um, keep on increasing the, the negative magnitude and uh, watch this conductance fall um, even more. Uh, and we can go through a sort of manual cycle here. We're going to increase again the, the conductance, have it go up. And uh, in this way, you can, you can manually set the conductance of the device. Um, you have actually a fair amount of control here. One reason is due to all the board capacitances and such whenever you're working at um, you know, equivalent DC uh, frequencies, uh, you get much more control. 
Um, also, the, the incrementation of the device, the change in the memristors becomes very fine as you're, you're sort of riding that threshold. Um, and you can use that to, to sort of dial in whatever conductance you would like. So, for example, I'm going to try to dial this in to, uh, let's say, 0.19 millisiemens. Let's see if I can do that. So I've increased the voltage, and it's increasing the conductance. And um, I can see it rising here. I'm just going to give it a little bit of time. OK. And there we are. So I've, you know, I've come close. Um, and I also notice how there is um, there's a change in the computed conductance um, as a function of the applied voltage. Now, this is due to nonlinearities um, in, in the device um, and the measurement equipment itself. So uh, one big lesson in, in using and uh, measuring these memristors if you're going to be measuring the conductance, always use the same voltage when you're doing it. If you measure the, the conductance at, say, you know, 0.1 volts, and then you measure the conductance at 0.15 volts, uh, you might get discrepancies. And this has to do with nonlinear, let's say, diode-like properties in the device or in, in measurement equipment. So always use the same voltage if you're taking measurements um, of the device. You always use the same sort of low voltage uh, magnitude. Uh, OK, so we have dialed in the, the conductance of this memristor. We got close. We're at 0.18 uh, millisiemens. And let's deselect that and select it again. And uh, notice that um, we don't have a change. This is important. Um, in a future video, I'll, I'll talk about charge injection from switches. This is one issue that we ran into, and it's something that you should be aware of um, in designing memristive circuitry. Uh, so let's select our, our first memristor. Uh, we see it's already at about 0.16. Let's see if we can, we can drop that a little bit. And let's do a nice hard reset, going all the way to minus 2 volts. Uh, typically, it's much safer to apply negative uh, voltages to these devices, because as you do, the conductance will decrease, uh, and you sort of get a self-limiting uh, behavior. On the other hand, it's not safe at all to apply strong forward applied voltages to the devices without any kind of current limiting, otherwise you'll fry it. The conductance will increase, um, the current will increase, and the devices will blow themselves out. Uh, so it's, uh, it's perfectly fine to apply um, high negative voltages. Um, it's not OK, um, high positive voltages. Uh, okay, so we've reset the device, and we're reading a conductance of uh, 0.01 millisiemens. And up, oh, we just get this jump. Check this out. Okay. And the device has continuing to rise. This is an indication that we have a fairly um, low threshold of, of uh, forward threshold of adaptation. Uh, it's still rising, it's still rising. Okay, so we're going to put that back at 0.1 volts, and uh, we should be um, stable. Okay, so we're, we're riding at 0.44 millisiemens right now. Let's, uh, let's lock this axis and go through one more cycle here. So um, I'm applying a very small negative voltage. And we can see that it's uh, sort of teetering, you know, sort of right on the edge of instability. Um, as we increase the magnitude, we should reach a point where the voltage is sufficient to drive a reverse change in the device. Um, there we go. We're starting to see it drop. And there it comes back down. Boom. And, and if you notice that really fast, abrupt change, um, in this particular configuration, it happens because of the circuit. Um, I've done a previous video where I describe why this happens. Um, you're only going to have more control setting the conductance with a forward applied voltage versus a negative applied voltage due to um, self-limiting that occurs via 
the, the voltage drop across the device, across the memristor, because it's in series with the resistor. Um, so think about that. I'm not going to explain it on this video. Uh, I've explained it in previous videos. Um, but it's something that you need to think about uh, because the, the circuit that a memristor is embedded in has a very big effect on how it behaves. Um, okay, so let's let's do one one more cycle. Let's reset this. And we can drive it up one more time. Let's uh, let's stop at let's say oh that's good why not keep it low okay so we are at 0 0.1 volts uh, we can deselect and select see if we have a stable okay so let's ch check our other device um, it's holding at 0.16 uh, notice its conductance has decayed just a tad so uh, what you'll notice um, in long-term measurement of these devices, as you set the conductance, there's an initial decay and then it'll sort of level off. Um, okay, so we have 0.16 millisiemens. Uh, we have 0.1, a little under 0.1 millisiemens, and then we select them together, which means we add their currents um, and uh, we add their conductances and so we sum them together and we get 0 0.1, 0 0.25 millisiemens. Okay, so we've done an analog sum of currents um, with memristors in which we have set their conductances. Um, if you would like to reduce some noise uh, in the measurements, uh, which comes into effect in some environments, uh, I was a, in a cafe in Portland whenever I was first working on this app and uh, it was very crowded and people were walking all around me. Um, and it caused a whole lot of noise. Um, and to mitigate that, we have, have an adaptive average here, uh, which is set by this K value. So K uh, goes between zero and one, and the smaller K is, the more adaptive averaging is going to occur. Uh, and if you'd like to see the equation for this adaptive averaging, um, you can uh, look at the, the README um, or the help menu. Uh, so I'm going to set this at 0.1. Notice the uh, the noise has been reduced in this measurement. So let's let's take this back to uh, to one. Uh, and you can see this here. Let me. There we go. Uh, notice there's a there's some noise. the The computed value of the conductance is sort of wobbling, um, plus or minus, is by a certain amount. Uh, kind of going up and down like that. Uh, and if we set K to, um, let's say, 0 0.01, uh, this will average many more data points and you'll get a, a much more accurate uh, value. Um, you'll still get some long-term, uh, sort of long time scale noise, uh, but a lot of the, the short-term fluctuations uh, will be averaged out. Uh, okay, so that is the hysteresis app. I've shown you how to get uh, IV curves, um, conductance voltage curves, and I've showed you how to play with the devices in the DC mode, sort of manually set their conductance. Uh, next up is going to be the Pulse app.